John McMullen time. Follow John on Twitter at JFMcMullen, phillyvoice.com, si.com, host of Extending the Play every Saturday morning. And uh, also just earned himself a pretty high seed there for the uh, <laughs> field of 64 of uh, Eagles insiders. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, let's bring John into the conversation now. And we still have plenty to get to after head coach Jeffrey Lurie and his comments yesterday. Uh, Johnny Mack, how you doing, my friend? All right, we'll have, uh, we'll have John call back here in just a second. But uh, so Kevin Kincaid from Crossing Broad. Crossing Broad is a uh, well-known media outlet, I guess you can say, right? And um, website that covers people covering sports. And they do a lot of other things, too. They're, they also do a great job, actually, with their sports gambling content, um, among other things. But uh, they released a, a Field of 64 March Madness-style bracket where John is... Uh, a four seed. All right, so I'll, I'll go through that bracket maybe a little bit later in this conversation uh, with John, but we still have plenty of Eagles stuff to get to here. Jeffrey Lurie obviously came out. If you, if you missed this, I don't know how you missed this, but Jeffrey Lurie comes out and says he doesn't want a, a quarterback competition. Doesn't want it. So I don't know if the Eagles were going to draft a quarterback if they were in the process of evaluating a quarterback. Uh, let's see if we have John now. John, you with me? There we go. Okay. That's exciting. That is exciting. Um, <laughs> how we doing, man? Doing well. Technical difficulties aside, we powered through. We did power through. Um, all right, so we got a lot to get to here tonight, but... Just to have some fun with you to start this conversation. Did you see the crossing broad uh, bracket? Uh, yeah, I did not. I was. I have seen it now. I was made aware of it. I, I cannot. A. I cannot believe that exists. I think Kevin's a goofball. He's a good guy, but he's a goofball, <laughs> and it's kind of silly. But whatever. It is silly, but uh, you know. Kevin Kincaid is a West Virginia alum, so uh, yeah. he's certainly going to be, you know, a screw loose, I guess. Let's put it that way. We all do. <laughs> I'm just glad I got a four seed. I, I, I don't care if I got upset. That's, uh, you know, four seed's not bad. A ah, four seed is, uh, you know, that, that's respectable. I think if anything, you, you know. It's a little bit low, but uh, nonetheless. All right, so <laughs> let, let's let's switch gears here now. Jeff, yeah, I go to go I, you know I go to Jimmy Kemsky's uh, face-off rankings. That's what I hang my hat on. I was okay. number one in that. Right. So that that's back that's... when we had face-offs before Zoom. <laughs> what a time! I can't even imagine what that must have been like. Um, all right. So what's changed since last night? Let's start with that. <laughs> What's changed since last night? <laughs> yeah. uh, not much. I mean, as far as if you're talking about Jeffrey Lurie and his uh, decree, so to speak, uh, to to build around Jalen Hurts, whatever that means, uh, we'll see. I, I mean, a lot of people, and we mentioned yesterday on the show, I, I don't think this organization would have done it through Chris Mortensen, if that wasn't the actual uh, plan, I don't think they're playing 3D chess, trying to get somebody to lose their guard and, and perhaps, you know, maybe let Justin Fields fall to them. And ultimately, by the way, just from a practical standpoint, I don't think it's going to matter because I don't think any of the top three quarterbacks are going to be there. So, it's not maybe as important as people think it is, but I think the larger, and what I also said, the larger part of this is, you know, it's just something he shouldn't be doing. He should let his personnel people come to the conclusion they're probably going to come to anyway because they have to. Yeah, and it's, you know, we talked a little bit about this last night, but I, I we have to revisit it because it just – it's it's absurd. It's literally mind-boggling that, you know, that point that you just bring up, John, is just another reason among way too many 
of like, dude, you didn't have to do this. Like the quarterback's yeah. probably not even going to be there. Or you could have came out and said the staff has been evaluating and we feel like th- there's so many different ways he could have <laughs> approached this. And of course he went the one wrong way about it. Yeah. And, and by the way, today, as I stand here, it, it by some uh, act of uh, God that Justin Fields does fall to number six, I still find it very hard to believe they're not going to take him. And I don't know if that means Howie Roseman just ignoring him uh, or something of that nature. I, I find it really hard to believe that they're not going to take that player. But I, I also find it really hard to believe he's going to be there. So, again, it's kind of a moot point and goes back to your point of why. Because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense from a, a strategy standpoint. It doesn't make any sense for him to do that, and, and the timing as well. Like, what? why do you give a you-know-what? I mean, Pro Days just started this week. We just talked to Jan, Daniel Jeremiah uh, on his conference call today. This is the beginning of the draft process. It's, it, it, these guys aren't even having Pro Days until later in the month. What? What is the point? John, just to confirm, you've already confirmed this, but it's just going to get to the next point that Nick Sirianni and the coaching staff essentially have no say in at least the number six pick. Is that accurate? Uh, I, I, no, that's a tough, it, it kind of depends on your definition. I, I mean, look, any, any good general manager um, tries to get players his coaching staff wants, but ultimately no, they don't have any say. They can't walk into the draft room and say, I want this player. But, you know, coaching staffs generally don't do that anyway. Uh, and with the notable exception of, of certain guys, Bill Belichick being most notable, who have control over the whole process, um, which is rare in today's game and getting rarer, if anything. Um, most teams have a GM. Most teams have a coach, and some of those coaches have a lot more power than other coaches. But even those guys are generally the Pete Carrolls of the world, are are generally understanding the job's too big for them to do. So they listen to their general manager. They make um, recommendations. And some people have more power with that recommendation. And and Nick certainly doesn't have a lot of power. But that – that's not strange for a rookie head coach either. And, you know, I asked that because the follow-up is how does that impact the draft process from Nick Sirianni's perspective and, the, and his coaching staff's perspective when you you don't have full control or even a little bit uh, control in – you know, evaluating and making a decision on who you want to select in the draft. Like, what what do they do? How does that affect them? Yeah, I, I don't think it does. I, I, I don't. I, I'm not going to play up that part of it because I don't think it's that important. Uh, they, they know coming in that uh, how he's in charge of the roster and how he's in charge of personnel. And Andy Wiles is right-hand man and the scouting department's going to pick the players. They, they're their role is to tell them the type of players they want for the schemes they want to run. And again, it's, it behooves a general manager to get players his coach wants. That's just part of the job. So um, unless you have these loggerheads and, and, you know, a GM who hates the coach or vice versa, um, that stuff shouldn't be an issue. And certainly uh, on the first go around, there's no reason for either side to hate the other side. So I, I don't think that part of it is going to be much of an issue. The bigger part is, again, the owner taking off the table, in theory, taking off the table quarterback at number six from the personnel department. That's just silly. All right. I, I mean, here's the thing, like, 
Let's play this hypothetical for a second, and this is not going to come to be reality because this would be ridiculous. But let's just say, for the point of the the point that I'm trying to make, there's Fields, Kyle Pitts, and Chase all available at number six. Okay, I know that's not possible, but just hear me out. They're all available, and Coach Sirianni says, "Man, I would really like Pitts." To, because of my scheme and offense that I want to build. <laughs> is Howie going to say, no, we have to go fields or we have to go wide receiver? Like the reason why I bring up that hypothetical is I want to know what you think Howie's thinking about for best potential option and vice versa. Well, I, I will say in theory, you shouldn't have that situation because you've uh, already made these decisions before draft night. In other words, you already have your board set up. It goes from generally 75. The Patriots tend to have the smallest board in the NFL. It's been as low as 75 players uh, throughout the whole process. That's, that's how um, finite they got it down to in one particular year. It's, generally about 150 for most teams uh and you have your board and you set it up horizontally with positions and um when your spot comes up you've already made the decision you have players you will take and you sort of the ones who are taken before you you take off the board they're not obviously available uh and then you make the decision um where you get in trouble is if you kind of go away from that board. And I, you know, I I don't see the Eagles going away from their board at six. There's only a finite number of options that could potentially happen. Um, So they're going to be prepared. They're going to understand who they're going to draft. Or if somebody isn't there, maybe they'll trade back, Uh, whatever. Those decisions will be made, um, before the draft even starts. So you don't get into these sort of screaming matches of pits and, and if it's pits versus chase or, or fields versus pits or so they've already made that decision. Um, and, and, and it's pretty straightforward at that particular point. Talking with John McMullen, our NFL Eagles insider, uh, just like we do every single night here on the fix. All right. So I, I want to pick back up with our position, you know, breakdowns and nightly focus. So I do want to talk a little bit uh, about the linebacker position tonight. Um, but before we get there, I, I just want to ask you about the, the likelihood pos- or possibility of the Eagles trading out of the number six pick, whether that's up or back. Um, I, I think there's a, a small possibility. I, I think it, it it grows, maybe. You know, we've been talking about the quarterback. Let, let's say, I mean, let's say it fields there at six and the Eagles are hell-bent on not taking them. Uh, you might as well trade out. If you can get somebody to trade up for the quarterback, you might as well pick up a few extra assets um, but I, I would be wary of trading back too far. Um, as I mentioned, talked to Jeremiah today. I talked to a, a couple of other scouts recently. Yeah, there's always tiers, and in the, in the tier here, everyone pretty much is is right on board. It's about 10 to 12 where you'll see a drop off. Uh, so you can't go back far. Um, I, I think this team has to make number six counts and they have to get a star They have to get a star player. And if it's not a quarterback, it's got to be somewhere else. And there's a finite amount of star players. Now, as we all know, you can hit on a star anywhere in the draft. And, you know, that's where I, fans tend to frustrate me at times because they'll point out, you know, Tom Brady's a six round pick. Oh, thanks. We didn't know that. The point is the odds of finding a superstar quarterback in the sixth round aren't good. Uh, never mind. And same thing with every other position. And so the higher up you are, the more talented the players are, the more likely they turn into good players. 
uh, from an analytical standpoint, and, and that's why you have to make those those. Those those picks really count. When you're up in the top ten, you better hit on a player. So I, I don't think the Eagles can get cute is what I'm trying to say. They got to just get a star um, somewhere. And it could be uh, – there's so many needs, it could be all over, multiple positions. Uh, today was a relevant date in the NFL, correct me if I'm wrong, the franchise tag deadline, right? Yeah, it turned out to be, and that's, you know, it was interesting that there was talk it would be pushed back because the league is, you know, still hammering out the players in the league are are still concerned about the salary cap and how the the new TV deals are going to affect it moving forward. But uh, deadline was today, uh, and you saw some of the players, uh, Biggest surprise probably Marcus Williams in New Orleans. Maybe the the best player who didn't get franchise, I think, Aaron Jones maybe in Green Bay. But running back, we all know that position. Um, so, uh, you know, Tampa Bay to me was interesting as well because they had so many options. Uh, I mean, they franchised uh, Chris Godwin, but, you know, that means Shaq Barrett can't be franchised. And that's at a position – edge rusher where you are going to get paid. So it's a good day for Shaq Barrett. Yeah, and uh, rightfully so for the the havoc that he's caused. All right, so let's uh, wrap up this segment, John, with some linebacker talk, and we can even carry this into tomorrow's uh, segment. We can do like part one, part two. Um, So just fill us in. As it stands right now, Give us the breakdown of the linebacker group uh, currently for the Eagles. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, as we said, with this new coaching staff to see how much more value they place on that position. Obviously, for years, uh, let's be honest, the Eagles haven't placed uh, a lot of value at that position. You saw it last year. I I mean, if you think about Nate Gary being the starting three-down linebacker, That'll make everybody shake their head. You know, how do you go into a season? Ultimately, didn't play well. I don't think that surprised uh, many people. Ult- uh, ultimately, got hurt. Alex Singleton was forced into the lineup. Actually, it was because of injuries to not only Nate Gary but also T.J. Edwards with the hamstring. He, he finally got an opportunity. Alex Singleton, and he was by far, by far, the Eagles' best linebacker, and. Look, I, I think Alex did a great job, but again, he's not. We were just talking about Tampa Bay and, and Goblin and Shaq Barrett. He's Alex Singleton isn't Devin White. Let's put it that way. You know, that I I, I mean, he's not a difference making player. He was just a little bit better. So right now, I mean, he's the Eagles' best linebacker, and then you have T.J. Edwards, and then you have the young guys, Davion Taylor, uh, third round pick. Last year, Sean Bradley, six-round pick out of Temple. Um, Gary's a free agent. Duke Riley's going to be a free agent. So um, they're not impactful, even if they were to be brought back. In the case of Duke Riley, maybe he can help you as a special teams player, but not much more than that. So uh, it's going to be interesting from the fact that Jonathan Gannon, his history is with uh, Minnesota before Indianapolis, and, and the Vikings have Anthony Barr and Eric Kendricks, two really good linebackers, uh, and the Colts had Darius Leonard, who's a really good linebacker. So it's time for the Eagles to get something at that position, and I mean something by uh, playmaking type linebacker. Look, you, you're not going to get Devin Boyd, but you got to have more impactful play from the linebacking position. So how do they go about doing that? And, you know, you can start with the draft, and if you want to touch on free agency or any other options. Yeah, I mean, people have, have kind of put two and two together because um, I just mentioned uh, Barr and Kendricks. Barr was injured uh, last year, tore his pack in like week two. So he essentially missed. Uh, the whole season, and Eric Wilson stepped in. And it played pretty well, um, had a lot of sacks, 
interceptions, three interceptions, three sacks. I think he was the only player in the NFL uh, to do that. So th- the problem there is, I, I, I don't. He he's he was good on a bad defense, and that always scares me. Um, and he's going to get paid a lot of money, uh, and I don't think he he's he's going to live up to that contract. So, you know, a lot of it is, look, you hope Davion Taylor is the one guy who from a skill set standpoint has everything you need uh, as far as a modern linebacker, modern linebacker as far as being able to run um, with anybody um, in the in the spread and shred sort of game. But he's so raw. I mean, he barely played in high school. Uh he he didn't have a ton of experience at the college level as well, um, so you got to keep developing him, and you got to go. I mean, Darius Leonard was a second round pick. Eric Hendricks was a second round pick. So maybe you got to go a little bit into day two uh, of the draft and and pluck somebody out there who can become uh, a star player. That's that's how the Eagles got to go about it. What hurts is, you know, third round pick is pretty significant as well, and it's much like the Eagles at wide receiver when we talk about Jalen Rager, JJ Ortega, Whiteside. Can you really take another receiver again? Sorry, a linebacker. Can you really take another linebacker in the first two days of the draft? This is what happens when you miss on draft picks. It makes everything that much harder moving forward. Yeah, it really does, and. um you know, that's why like free agency and especially this year and with the Eagles and their limited amount of cap space and money availability. I mean, how creative can they get outside of the draft, whether it's trading or, you know, free agency, as we've d- discussed with other positions, they they're really limited in those areas. Yeah, they are, and that's part of the problem. I mean, I bring up a guy like Wilson, and that he might even be too rich for him. And I don't even think he's going to be that good of a player, and that's the problem you have. I, I mean, can you get invented to do something like that? Yeah, probably, but ultimately it's not going to help you that much. So uh, if I were the Eagles, I, I would at that point say, okay, we just got we just got to take what we have and and hope Alex Singleton continues to um, produce and, and maybe get Davion Taylor on, on the field. You know, sometimes if you throw a guy into the deep end of the pool, sometimes he swims. And maybe he's so physically impressive, it's time to just say, let's throw him into the deep end of the pool and see if he can figure it out. You know, as we're just talking through this, I don't know how anyone can say this with any certainty or even just optimistically, casually say that this team is not rebuilding. I mean, it's you have Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Transitioning. Right. Okay. (laughs) From what to what? (laughs) Well, I I mean, it is uh, cyclical as. I explained. I mean, that's just the way the NFL is. Uh, you know, they, there's no question they held on to a lot of their expensive aging players too long. Um, and remember, they have those two consecutive years of only five draft picks because uh, of what they had to give up to get Carson Wentz. Uh, so you weren't replenishing with younger players. Um, and that's why the Eagles are where they are. But last year started, kind of started the new cycle. We mentioned Howie Roseman admitted he made a mistake when the pandemic started. And he said, oh, maybe we'll hang on for one more year because we have this big advantage in continuity, which turned out to be anything but. And he admitted that was a mistake. So they were supposed to start this transition last year. They had more bodies in the draft. Um, and it will continue this year, and they have, they'll have more picks again this year, and that's and they'll start to populate the back end of the roster with those younger bodies. But, you know, Taylor's a perfect example of that. You, you, you took a really raw player in the third round. So 
at this point, that's where I am with that. You might as well see what you have. And that's why I say throw them in the deep end of the pool, because at least you know at that point, what good is keeping a guy like that around for four years if you're never going to play him? You know, yeah. what's the point? There's no point. <laughs> you, you have to figure out what you have. And I feel like they've done that too much, at least in the past. And maybe now with all these changes, um, that's going to be one of the changes that comes with it. So, all right, John, we'll have to get more into the Eagles and uh, the defensive side of the ball tomorrow night here on The Fix. John joins me every night at 7.30. Follow John at J.F. McMullen on Twitter and go check out all of his written work, Philly Voice and SI.com. And you can listen to John host Extending the Play every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 11. Have a good night, man. We'll talk tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Yep, there he is, Johnny Muck. Johnny Muck! The, the, the middle. I'm out on fishing in areas like... Come on, bro. The- you have, you're about to have a kid, and he's going to want to go fishing. Uncle B can't take him fishing all the time. you got to learn to fish, bro. It's a good point. What do you mean you it's a good happy. point? My ability to father my child relies solely on taking him fishing? Yes, well, Mr. Predicto. All right, what's the question for Mr. Predicto here? About your ability to father a child. <laughs> well, it has to be yes or no, okay? Will your son want to go fishing? Will my son, my boy, want to fish? Uh-oh. The signs say no. Huh? Oh, that's it. I'm walking off the set like Maury. Boom, boom. I'm out. Drop the mic. See ya. You're not capable of dropping the mic. Oh, my goodness. I'll yeah. roll with that Mr. Predict. This is my guy right here. The Middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern.